Hi, this is Hamada and welcome to Final 50, where I'm on a quest to see the last 50 countries on Earth. And in this journey, we're in the islands of Cape Verde, exploring the nature, the food, the culture, and especially the music. So let's check out what these incredible islands have on offer. Cabo Verde is an archipelago made up of 10 volcanic islands off the coast of West Africa, with each island incredibly different in terms of landscape and nature. And despite being a small island nation, Cabo Verde is known to be one of the most diverse countries in the world, and due to this, the country has an incredibly rich Creole Portuguese African history, especially in terms of art, music, food, and traditions. All right, we landed in Praia in Santiago Island, and now we're jumping on a flight that's gonna take us from here to Sal and Sal to Sal Vicente. So excited to do that. We're gonna be taking probably a propeller plane, which kind of looks like one of these guys. But you can see, should be an interesting experience. We started off our journey by traveling to the island of San Vicente, which is located in the northern part of the country and is known for its stunning beaches, vibrant nightlife, and rich cultural heritage. The island is home to the city of Mindelo, which is often referred to as the cultural capital of Capo Verde. And Mindelo is famous for its lively music scene, which blends in traditional African rhythms with Portuguese influences. This is exactly the reason why I want to start the journey here, to really discover how this island had such an important influence on the rest of the country's music scene. All right, Cape Verde, country number 154, in the beautiful airport on the island of Sao Vicente, which is named after the famous, incredible Cape Verdean singer. Let's go check out this beautiful country and see what it's all about. So we're here in San Vicente, a beautiful island, one of the 10, and it's a Sunday, so things are really, really quiet and chill. We're walking what feels like almost a desolate town, and you can see over here, people are at church service because 85% of Cape Verdeans are Christian and of different uh, denominations within the Christian faith. So I'm gonna show you a little bit more about how kind of quiet and serene the city can be, Mindaloa, the capital, on a given Sunday. But really, really quaint, nice, a little bit rustic, but I'm really excited to see what this place has to offer, especially the music scene, which we are going to chase down and get some beautiful samplings of the music of this country. By the time we got settled in, we had worked up a huge appetite, so I wanted to get some local fish and watch the sunset right there in the port of Mindelo. All right, so this is a curry, green curry, which I'm not surprised by because there's so much different types of cultures that come to the island of Cape Verde. Not surprising, shortly after we began eating, the musical notes started flowing. And that's where I met Claudia, an up and coming singer who I was able to later interview to learn more about the island's rich music scene. But this is really just the beginning of an incredible journey that started almost 20 years before in a classroom in UC Berkeley, where I was a law student and teaching assistant. I first heard of Capo Verde and its musical traditions in a class I assisted with called The Politics of Music, which was aimed to show the interplay between how politics influences music and music influences politics around the world. The professor, Darren Zook, who you'll meet shortly, asked, what happens when music projects its expressive and communicative potential into the political arena? During that class, we covered so many genres and political landscapes, from Bob Marley and the political overtones of reggae, to the social origins of tango in Argentina, to the nationalist music of Morna and Funana in Capo Verde. What makes Capo Verde so interesting when it comes to music is, you know, the, the entire history of Capo Verde is really this tragic story of a place that 
was populated by and was, you know, its entire history is deeply embedded in the visceral tragedy of slavery. Between that and the fact that its history is nothing but almost unending struggle all the way into the 20th century, what you have is this rare moment where, sure, lots of places have music, but with Cape Verde, if you really want to peer into the soul of Cape Verde, the only way to do that is to understand its music. It has, you know, just a, a brutal tragic history and out of that comes this amazing cultural scene that includes like i said a, a music that really is the soundtrack of its entire people you were already introduced to cesaria avora the queen of morna over the years i've grown to love her music and what she stands for which is honestly why i went straight to her home island of san vicente oddly enough on the first night i literally bumped into her home that she grew up in i came across the house of exactly the person i really came to cape verde to see which is the famous barefoot diva, or Cesaria Avora. And you can see her right there. She lived there from 1975, which is when Cape Verde got its independence from Portugal, until 1991. Really, it was in the late 80s and 90s when she had her breakout role and albums came out and so forth, and she really became a global sensation. So really, really serendipitous to come across her house right here, like very close to where I'm staying, uh, in downtown Mindaloa. Amazing. And the reason I'm here in Mindaloa is so that I can find where that incredible woman was born and lived, Cesaria Vora, the queen of Morna music. Excited to do a run in this beautiful little island here in Cape Verde and see what it has to offer at sunrise. A friend of mine came to visit and she went to Sao Vicente and said it was such a beautiful place, an incredible cultural capital. But even that I didn't really understand what is the cultural capital, nature, and the music of Cape Verde. Until by hapstance, I heard the song Sodad, which was sung by Cesare Avora, and I was just captivated. I had to know who this musician was. I had to know more about her plight, her music, her life story. And finally today, I was able to come to a museum dedicated to her. It was the house, I believe, of her daughter, and it became a museum to really represent her and showcase her incredible music, and really, most importantly, her incredible life, which draws such similarities between other artists who've gone through so much in their life, yet through that struggle was able to capture it in the music, in their voice, in the songs that they sang, and really captivate the world by doing that. So let's go check out this incredible museum and see what it has to offer. Now what was incredible about her story is that she lived such a difficult life, left behind by her parents and had to sing in dive bars to make a living in Mindelo. She was only discovered later in her career, very reminiscent to the life of the phenomenal French singer, Edith Piaf. Ivor went on to have a stored career as a musician, always singing barefoot and staying true to her roots throughout her life and even in death. In fact, her story is the story of Cape Verdeans those who come from simpler backgrounds, representing cultures far and wide, united together for the love of their country and pride of their unique heritage, which has struggled against colonialism, a theme that often emerged in Evora's music. But what really moved me was the simplicity of her grave, only few kilometers from where she was born, how humble and proud she was of her origins on the island of San Vicente, and how great her influence was on the lives of so many artists music lovers, and global citizens everywhere. After learning so much about Avora, I began to see the island differently and appreciate all the art, social expression in the streets, and the sheer diversity of the people. Really, the cultural milieu all around me. So the thing about Morna music is that it's about nostalgia, about loss, longing. Why? Because the history of this country is a history built literally on slavery. Portuguese came here in the 1460s or so, found this island which is completely uninhabited, and then as a slave trade continued, they needed a place to stop to be able to effectively reload and resupply. And that is exactly what Cape Verde served us. It was essentially a pit stop for people, or for slave traders taking people across the Atlantic. So think about that. It's a country built on the backs of slavery. And a lot of the people here you see, which are an amalgamation of Europeans, 
and West Africans are a vestige of that era. And then they created their own culture, their own identity that exists here in these 10 volcanic islands. Art and music is just so important to the culture of Cape Verde and it's everywhere. Like we just stumbled into this beautiful museum that features musicians and artists, sculptors, painters. This is really an incredible experience to be on this part of the uh, 10 volcanic islands, to be Savi Sanch and be able to experience this. And like I said, oftentimes, the understanding of Cape Verde can only really come through with the art, the music, the culture, because that's what shows you the history of, of pain and overcoming the, the tribulations that they face, the challenges to gain independence and become one of the success stories of Africa, a country that ranks up in the highest in transparency, press freedom, democracy, really an incredible story. Um, and it begins here in these islands. It really is amazing to be here. So here in the Culture Center, uh, I was told to come out and see if I can find an artist to speak with. So yesterday I went out and saw a bunch of acts in the town uh, that were really, really impressive. And so I, uh, was, I was asking like, where can I find someone I can speak to just about their experience, about their musical, you know, interests and what motivated them and influenced them. And so we're gonna to try to see if I can find one of those people. I showed them the video and they said, hey, look, maybe we can try to find the person. And if they speak English, we can even interview them. So let's uh, let's see and hope this happens. So Claudia, I heard her sing a couple of days ago and she really was incredible. So I wanted to speak to her. So tell me Claudia and her boyfriend here is gonna help translate for us. So tell me, Claudia, when did you start learning to sing and be a musician? Para entender, a partir do momento que eu falei você, me larga a guitarra, porque eu tinha que estudar. She started the, the singing with two years when she sits with the with the grandmother. The grandmother give a, translate a good inspiration about Cesare Avel, and mm -hmm. they all afternoon after lunch they put music Cesare Avel, and the grandmother sing for playing uh, the sing music. Yeah. <laughs> Claudia, tell me what has inspired you to sing? Who is your biggest influence? She said uh, Cesare Ebro translates a good inspiration. Good, uh, talking about Cape Verde, the traditional themes we have here. Cesare Ebro talked talk a lot in music. Okay. Musician. And so she yeah. liked her voice and her, voice, what she yeah. was saying yeah. and, and the traditions? Yeah. Amazing. And she uses this this feeling this feeling in her music when yeah. Claudia sings she used everything feeling about Cesaria I will say perfect <laughs> Tell me, so why did you create this incredible space? We create this space for the people, to the people, for to think, to talk, and to be happy. Through Friends of Friends, I was introduced to the beautiful owners of Bamboo Minuno. This cafe, or as they call it, a gallery of ideas and artistic education, is for the lovers of music, culture, and pride in Capo Verde, and located in the center of Mindelo. It reminded me of some of the salon-like watering holes in Berkeley that attracted thinkers and activists. But more than anything, I was truly blown away by the owners in terms of their warm hospitality and surreal knowledge of music. Antonio is in fact a true ethnomusicologist. That is an artist, producer, and teacher of music. I like. <laughs> So the type of music Patuk is more percussion? Percussion? It's a frog with the, the women's play in a, something like, like a tissue in the middle of the, the legs. legs. They make, a, they call this, this instrument a chabeta. Over the next few hours, I was introduced to many of the musical genres in Capo Verde, including the nostalgic sounds of Morna that bear slight similarity to the Portuguese fado, the fast-paced protest music of Funana, 
the sensual beats of Coladera and the feminine-led rhythms of Batuque by listening to the old vinyls and regaled with tales by the master himself as well as the amazing local friends I met there. This time is from uh, Nasia Gomi. It's the reign of Batuque. She is so special because inside of this this universe of sound or music, she gives a lesson from form of tile life, they give a philosophy, they make critic, political critic, social critic. So what because made what made Cesare Vora so good at Morna? The first thing is uh, she makes something like a Billy Holiday for the jazz. Play the, the, the populous music. Everybody knows this this music, but when she seeing this these things, you say what? She give a life. power, a life, a power. It's like a, you see different atmosphere, sentimental atmosphere inside of this 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 morning. You have something like a connect with your body. In the in this the sentimental form, the music, the the morna is the song of most of immigrants. They leave Cape Verde to get a better life in whatever. But even though you don't go, you don't leave San Vicente, you feel the same way because you know the immigrants when they go, they feel like they lost a part of their soul mm. and. We feel the same way, even though we don't go. Spending time at the cafe was one of the highlights of the trip, and I'm so grateful to have met the owners and my local friends who want me to truly appreciate the cultural nuances and musical wonders of the island nation. With a newfound appreciation for the culture and music, I was now super eager to discover all facets of the country, especially in terms of its history, nature, and food. So make sure to check out part two of the journey, where I explore the whole island of San Vicente, the beautifully raw nature of Santo Antao, and the capital of the country in Praia. But before embarking on the next adventure, I needed a strong nightcap. And what better way to facilitate that than with some local brew? This is Aguardiente, which I've had in Colombia before. It's not moonshine. It's licorice, sugarcane. Ooh! Ooh! That is no joke. <laughs> a hell of a lot stronger than I've ever had it before.